So in this lesson, we'll be examining the stages of development for tourist sites. And in doing so, we'll be answering one basic question. What stages do tourist destinations tend to evolve through over time? Now, as we've seen already in this course, tourism has many impacts, and many small countries have tied their future economic development towards tourism, especially many small islands in the Caribbean. The travel and tourism industry is viewed as being the best opportunity for generating more wealth and a better quality of life for their citizens, especially as they move from resource-based economies to service-based economies. Now, there's no one way to describe how these economies have shifted from resources to tourism. Resource economies can be unstable over time, uh, prices fluctuate, whereas tourism is seen as a more stable source of income for many. However, each country has its own unique geography and history which impacts its development. However, economists have identified some common stages of tourist development that many sites go through. And there's six stages that economists have more or less identified. We have the first stage of exploration, a second stage called involvement, a third stage called development, fourth stage called consolidation, a fifth stage called stagnation, and then a sixth stage where tourism can either rejuvenate itself, stay the same, or go into decline. Now what are these six stages? Well, let's go through them one by one. The first stage is called exploration. In this stage, there are very few tourists who visit the site. There's very few tourist facilities, very little infrastructure, so few hotels, few tourist attractions. There might not even be an airport on the island to get people in. So it's difficult for people to access it. Um, and so tourism has very little impact on the island, little to no impact. Tourists are explorers. They're coming here not because this is part of mass tourism. This is not the general public. These are people who are coming outside of mass tourism. The tourists tend to be very wealthy in this stage. The second stage is called involvement. In this stage, the number of visitors increases. Most tourists are still explorers. However, locals attempt to develop specialized tourist facilities to attract more visitors. The number of accommodations increases slightly, and the quality of them improves. So at this point, we might start getting more hotels for people to stay in. We might start seeing road infrastructure improve in major cities. We might see an airport being built. We might see tourist attractions and facilities on natural features like beaches that will make life easier for tourists as they come through. And we see a distinct tourism season emerge especially if there's a particular time of year uh, where the weather's nicer or more conducive to attract visitors. And it's usually in this stage where we start to see local tourist organizations create. The third stage of development is called development. In this stage, we start to see rapid growth in the tourist industry. Uh, expensive promotional efforts are made. Tourism has physical impacts on the landscape. So we can see this picture here, the development of beachfronts for tourists. Um, will actually see development on those natural features to improve the accommodations, to improve the infrastructure, but it's having a physical change on the landforms. If this might include things like deforestation to create more room for cities to expand into, it might include making changes to the beaches to prevent erosion so that people can enjoy more of the beach for longer. There's many different things that could go on here. We also see larger, more elaborate accommodations being developed. So we go from having maybe a few small hotels to many large hotels. Maybe you start getting large chain hotels, multinational corporations moving in. And we start to see significant improvements in travel infrastructure. So you might, by this point, you're probably seeing an airport um, on the island. You're starting to see uh, multiple ways for people to get around on the island. So you see the development of things like taxi cabs and uh, buses, mass transportation to get people to and from everywhere on the island. So we start to see these... Uh, spin-off industries developing as well in this stage. Local involvement in and control over tourism, however, declines rapidly in this stage. During its peak season, tourists outnumber the population. And during this stage, we often start to see labor be imported. There's not only is it, this is sort of a catch-22 here, where tourism has developed to the point where not only has it been so good for the local economy that's provided people with jobs, the demand for labor outstrips the supply that's available. So we start seeing people who are coming into the island from elsewhere to work. During this stage, we also see average income tourists targeted. We start to see an expansion to mass tourism. So now it's not just for the wealthy. This is affordable to a large uh, portion of the population. And we also start to see artificial events that are created to attract tourists. Uh, you might see things like sporting events, 
uh, or large festivals that are organized in order to try to draw more tourists in to get them to experience this place. In stage four, we have what's called consolidation. During this stage, tourism is established as a critical economic sector. A large proportion of employment is in tourism, and we see a mixture of domestic and foreign investment in tourism. Again, we continue to see multinational corporations investing money, which again has benefits for the locals because this is creating jobs, and it's creating uh, development of infrastructure there. But again, because this is foreign investment, uh, we, start, we can see leakages that go back to uh, other countries from outside of this place. In our fifth stage, we have what's called stagnation. In this stage, the area starts to lose some of its attractiveness. Overuse and overcrowding become common. So we have, again, on a beach, you might see there's so many visitors there, they're starting to do environmental damage, which is taking away some of the attractiveness of the place. Um, overcrowding, there might be so many people that are coming here, it's so attractive that it causes delays because the airports or the other infrastructure, the roadways can't handle this mass influx of tourists. So this ends up hurting the reputation of the place. Maybe it gets a reputation as having really slow service, or being really crowded, or having lots of traffic, or having poor service in general. So this leads us to the sixth stage. And this is where we sort of have a choose-your-own-path situation here. And there's sort of three routes that the destination could take. It can undergo rejuvenation, stability, or decline. And what happens is really dependent on what's going on in that location at that particular time. Our first option is called rejuvenation. In this stage, the area reinvents itself to appeal to new visitors. There's increased investment, the reputation is rehabilitated, and new attractions are built, while old ones are renovated to appeal to new, more, or younger travelers. So in this stage, you might see things like a casino being proposed to try to attract more people who wouldn't otherwise want to go to that destination, or perhaps an amusement park being proposed to bring in a different type of travel. We also see older uh, attractions, again, being renovated so that they aren't as run down, so that they can accommodate more people. And if they're successful, they'll have the money to do this, and it'll bring more people in, and the uh, destination will continue to be a successful tourist destination. Our second option for stage B is called stability. In this stage, the number of visitors plateaus. It stops growing, but it does not decline. So some of those losses are sort of mitigated. Maybe we have some renovations, but it's not attracting any new tourists. Tourism continues to be an important part of the local economy, but it's no longer a growth industry. So we're not seeing uh, lots and lots of people being hired every year. Sort of uh, new jobs are really only being created when people leave the industry because of retirements or because they're moving on to new job opportunities. So this is a stable industry, but it's not growing at the rate that it was prior. And our third option is called decline. In this stage, the number of tourists could decline uh, rapidly, could decrease at a huge rate. This could be due to a, a variety of factors that the destination is not so successful anymore. It could be due to political factors. Uh, for something like if we have a war, for example, that's going to definitely turn off people from wanting to travel there. It could be due to economic factors. If the local economy or the global economy goes into a downturn, there might no longer be the kind of investment that we had seen prior. Um, if real estate prices drop rapidly, you might see lack of investment for buying a few properties or hotels that no longer want to build new uh, venues in the destination. Or it could be due to environmental factors. So we have this picture here, which is in the uh, aftermath of Hurricane Irma in 2017, which struck the Caribbean island of St. Martin. Uh, caused a lot of damage, and because of that, the tourist facilities were unable to accommodate people in the short term. So if there's not the money there to repair all these facilities, you could see a destination go into decline. In the decline stage, venues and attractions fall into disrepair. When they need repairs, they don't. there's no money to repair them. And in this stage, we see layoffs of people, jobs go down, and locals have to turn to other industries in order to fuel the local economy. So in summary, in this lesson, you learned there are six stages of development that tourist destinations tend to evolve through over time. Areas begin with few travelers, but as more arrive, tourism becomes more entrenched in the local economy. After time, areas either rejuvenate, stagnate, or decline.